Hey everyone, my name is Roy, and in this recording I'll be explaining GraphQL for microservices in just 5 minutes. So what are microservices and why are they perfect for GraphQL? In this video I'll be explaining everything that you need to know about GraphQL and using it together with microservices. So first, microservices are domain based. Microservices are built to do one thing, and they are built to do one thing very well. You can explain this by looking at something else. Like if you have microservices, microservices have strict boundaries. You know what else has strict boundaries? Probably any of these knives. So if you look at A, B, C, you can see e is, A is definitely a microservice because A is an oyster knife. If you ever ate oysters, they're very hard to open. I need a very specific my knife to do so. And this knife, it's very hard to do something else with it. I once tried cutting cheese. It works, but it isn't the best experience. If you look at B, this is like your chef's knives. This is the knives the, the cook from the Netflix show Chef. He's probably using it to fillet like, uh, like a fish or use it for steak. You can use it for everything. You can even use it to uh, do household chairs if you want. And C is a monolith. It's a jack of all trades. It is a Swiss army knife that you can use for basically everything. It has a screwdriver. It has a scissor. It has an opener for your bottle, your beer bottle, your wine bottle. It can do everything. And monoliths can do everything. But a microservice, as you can see from A, does just one very thing. And it does this one thing very well. So B is a service. I'm not even going to be talking about services because I see too many companies using services where they should have been using a monolith or a microservice. So make sure if you have a microservice, make sure it does one thing and it does that one thing very well. And GraphQL? is perfect for these microservices because GraphQL helps you give a graph to these boundaries. If we look at an example, because GraphQL is about graphs, it gives boundaries, graphs, schemas, it works together with your microservices. Because microservices are domain-based, meaning that if you have a service set up where every service has its own domain, every service can have its own graph because we have these domains and we can change these demands, domains to be a graph instead. So you have this setup, we have an authentication service, a user service, we have a post service. If you convert this to GraphQL, we're gonna make sure we have a graph for every single microservice. So your authentication service, your user service, your post service, they will own have their own graph. If you look at auth, you can see it has a basic schema, it has a type definition, and there's a query, meaning that you can query this microservice independently of every other microservice. The same can be said for users, you get an ID, you get a name, you probably got much more because this is just an example. You go to post, you have an ID, a title, image URL, author, you maybe want to make connections between users and posts or posts and authentication and everything is possible if you bring together these graphs with GraphQL. Because with GraphQL you can bring together graphs in one single schema. If you look at this example again, so we have an authentication service, we have users, we have posts. So we have three services that we want to combine in one GraphQL data layer, or a GraphQL server, a GraphQL gateway, gateway, a GraphQL API mesh, call it whatever you want. It is GraphQL and we're bringing data together in one single schema. Because GraphQL is about combining schemas into one different schema. So we have three separate schemas, makes three, and we go to one single schema. And we can do this with GraphQL Federation using StepSan. Of course, there are different ways to do GraphQL Federation. You have Apollo, you have schema stitching from the guild, but with StepSan we have GraphQL Federation, which is declarative, meaning that you don't need to build services, you don't need to build gateways. The only thing you do, you define a GraphQL schema to bring together other GraphQL schemas. You can extend existing types. So let's say you have the type user, you want to combine it with post type. You can use a custom directive called at materializer, as you can see there, to bring together different queries in a type. So whenever you want to get the posts for all the users, you're going to be sending two queries instead of one, except for you as a user, you're only pasting one query in your, in your terminal or in your graphical interface. And you can also create a sequence of different queries. So let's say you first want to get an authentication token before you actually retrieve the posts from your microservices. With StepSend, you can do it using just a custom directive called add sequence. So you can take a couple of steps to get all the data you need, and then the output will be a GraphQL type again. 
And this is all being done declaratively, all being done by just writing a GraphQL schema. And the best thing is, it is deployed serverless to the cloud for you. Of course, you can also run it in your own Dockers, um, but why not try to go the serverless way and deploy it to the cloud for you to save you not only time and money, but also make it even way easier for you as a developer to build and deploy GraphQL schemas. So try it out today. Go to stepsend.com and make sure that you try out the getting started section. Also, if you like this video, stay tuned for our channel, subscribe to it, like this video and share it with everyone you talk to because GraphQL is the new way to go.